Yo, what's going on, y'all? I'm Cavell Anderson, and we're back with another VV and Ecomi video. So, in this one, we're going to be checking out Sleeping Comics, and he's going to be giving some of his end of the year thoughts on VV and some of the stuff that they've delivered this year. And I'm interested in hearing his perspective. I'm back. I'm trying to check out the sentiment that's currently going on in the community, how people are feeling, how the influencers, the creators are feeling, how just the, the, the viewers are feeling. I want to know how everyone's feeling, what everyone's thinking about the project right now. So, let me know some of your thoughts and updates in the comments and some of the things that I need to check out that I may have missed because i have not been paying attention at all um so yeah i, I do want to hear uh hear how everyone's feeling about this so i'm going to be sharing some of my thoughts of course as always some of my opinions and we're going to be hearing some of um some of sleeping's opinions so yeah that being said be sure to drop that thumbs up subscribe turn on notifications and let's jump into it y'all specifically talk about vivi here and uh and digital collectibles nfts whatever you want to call them uh kind of some madness this year in general um I will talk specifically um, kind of about three things and then I want to like talk about how they project forward and, and what they mean. Um, so in terms of VV, I always had a great year. They did a lot of different things. Um, but one of the biggest pivotal pieces, I think, was seeing them both in the booth in multiple different Comic Cons. They were in the Marvel booth right with Marvel. Their logo sitting right next to them was really, really significant, I think and uh marvel their logo sitting that is that's that's huge that's massive because not not just anyone can get next to marvel not next not just anyone can get partnered with the all the partners that vv has so i think that this is one of those things that it may seem minor it's maybe something that people overlook because you know we know that they're partnered already but this is huge like this is this is this is an event that's been going on way before VV existed. This has been going on for decades, I believe, um, or, or at least a decade. I'm not like obviously I don't. I've been hearing about Comic Con my whole life. It feels like so. Yeah, this, this has been this has been going on a while. So for VV to already be on a level where they're like neck and well, not neck and neck, but they're partners. Like they're 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 openly partnered with uh, brands of this magnitude. I think that's very promising for the future of VV. And it also goes to show you that Marvel is a, they, they started from nothing as well. They started from the bottom, same as Disney. So these brands know what it's like to be started. At, at the starting point, Vivi is already doing big things like this. So if this is just the very, very bottom, if we're very, very early on, which we are, and this is what the bottom looks like, just imagine what the top looks like. And this is the perspective that you have to have. I know that there's a lot of negative people, the bearish people who are like, oh, this is not a this is not a startup. This is not a beginning company. This is they, they say all this BS that doesn't make sense whatsoever. But the fact of the matter is this is a startup. This is the beginning. And this is what level one looks like. So imagine what happens as VV continues to level up and actually moves out of the point of actually just being a startup. It's it's going to be insane. It's going to be crazy. So, yeah, um, I'm looking forward to it. But this is this is a very, very big moment. This is critical right next to them was really really significant i think and uh and really i think when you project that forward um really helps establish the brand um i don't think we may need even understand how significant that was the other one is uh marvel even when things started to kind of really really pull back um over the summer and obviously some of the other stuff that happened later uh in the year that i'll talk about in a second they kept going and they have entrusted, and I use the word entrust, I think it's a trust is the right word, uh, with Amazing Fantasy 15, which is perhaps their biggest comic of all. Um, they dropped that one, we were able to grab some of those. It's held pretty well um, from a value perspective. And that's actually huge because it is trust. At the same time, these companies need to make money. They're going to drop this as in NFT format regardless, regardless of what happens, but the fact that they've chosen Vivi, they could have went with Palm, they could have went with something different, they could have chosen any platform. No NFT platform is turning down Marvel. No, no NFT platform is turning down um NF15 or um AF15. Um, but the fact of the matter is they chose Vivi. They they chose Vivi. They see the vision and they partnered with Vivi initially because they actually liked the vision that Vivi had. Um, and and look at how closely partnered they've been ever since. Um, like we heard the, the former CEO of Disney actually spoke about what the metaverse is going to be for Disney. And it was damn near regurgitated words directly from David Yu. Um, we covered that in the video a while ago and just to, to see how locked in and how close these companies are, 
Um, I'm very, very bullish for the future. We're in the middle of a bear market, a recession and things like that. But this is the first time Disney has survived one of these. And obviously, Disney and Marvel are partnered with Vivi. So, and this isn't the first time David Yu has actually been through a recession or anything or Alfred Kahn. Like, these people are experienced. They know what they, they know that is building time. It's time to build the foundation for what's going to be something massive in the future. So this is the this is the calm before the storm right now. This is the time to to be, you know, stacking, putting yourself in position to really, you know, be prepared for when things actually blow up and take off. Um, but yeah, anyway. And uh, I just think that's fascinating. I do believe that with the revenue that Marvel's able to make for all of these past comics, it's a no-brainer. This is not going to stop. Yeah. It's going to continue to move forward, and it's just going to be up to really the world to understand or want, and they may not, all these digital collectibles and digital comics. So that's my first one is the significance of... And that's that's an amazing topic, an amazing discussion to have. Will the world actually want this? Because I think the the, the one of the issues with the VV community is this collector's purist mentality where people believe that be every everyone's just going to be a true collector is going to want to hold things when the majority of the community is not look at how big vv was at one point in time and look at how many people are left the true collectors are left it's gotten to a point where it's so many things here it's so risky for me that even i don't hold a lot of the nfts right now i don't hold a lot of nfts because it's a risky investment because of how much content that they're dropping and because of how the space as a whole is changing there's a lot more risk surrounding this stuff when regulations and stuff come into play. So it's like, it stops making sense for just regular investors or, or regular people jumping in because of gaming or stuff like that to ever want to go for certain collector's items. And it really does go down to the people who, who are in this for the passion of the collectors. But that I think that that's the minority. That's always going to be the minority because look in the real world, look in the physical world. Collectors are the minority. Like, yeah, everybody collects something, but for people who would classify themselves as a collector, a true collector, that's the minority. Um, what people are going to want is entertainment. And that's what these collectibles are going to allow for in the future, where if you have one collectible, if you have this collectible, it comes with this experience tied to it, which you can now enjoy with your friends. That That is what this is. this is all about. This is about what collecting is going to become. And that's what's going to make a newer generation fall in love with collecting. And I think that the mindset to keep everything old, when we're living in a whole new world and we're moving towards an, a world even farther away from the world that, that everyone who's collectors have fell in love with, we're moving even farther away from that world. I think what it means to be a collector, it has to progress as well. Um, Because right now, in this modern day and age, the biggest collectors in the world that I would say are the kids who owns all these Fortnite skins. These Call of Duty skins, these, these Minecraft skins and things like that, those are the biggest collectors in the world. And those are the collectors that I care to attract. Um, at the end of the day, you have some of these OGs that that will spend major money and stuff like that because you actually got, but that's the minority. That's the minority. I want millions of little kids here collecting every single skin because it's cool. That's what I care about. I want that's what I want. So um, yeah, like that, that's just my perspective on it. Um I can do without the purists. The purists is always going to be the minority in my eyes. The people who are really going to be making the money is the, the people here for the entertainment side of things. And with these type of brands, you have so much entertaining that could be done in so many different ways. Um, so, yeah. Of the interaction with Vivi and Marvel and how their partnership has continued to stay strong. And as we know, even last week, they dropped uh, Journey into Mystery 83, the first appearance of Thor, which is you know a huge, huge book. Uh, so we have a lot more to that. come, I'm sure. Might have to get that. Hulk number one, X-Men number one, a lot of great comics uh, we should look forward to over the next year. So I'm excited for that. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing I have, which uh, is kind of combined you know how much with the it is. thing, but the second thing I have is they were able to achieve cash out. And this is something that they had talked Ooh. about a lot. Uh, people had funded a lot. Um, I even got a little worried in the end. But no, you can... You know, if you had a thousand gems, you were able to take those. And I can confirm that you can definitely cash out. <laughs> you can cash out. I mean, I've started a whole business off of EV funds. So, um, yeah, you can definitely cash out. <laughs> cash out to a bank account. And now they've even changed it. If you have 500 gems, uh, you can now cash out. 
There are some fees. People don't like those fees. There's always fees. We'll see if some of those it's go $50? down over time. But it's I think it was um, store. a very difficult piece of functionality, and uh, they were able to achieve it. I know there are some countries that still aren't able to do it, so they're still working to that. I know they initially had some sort of deal where you could actually cash out for crypto. They may bring that back. I'm not sure where that is at anymore, but I think it's probably imminent, and when it, the time is right, they will bring that back. But that was a huge event, and that kind of speaks to, um, and obviously that, that continues to allow. You know, coming back, looking at the app, because I haven't really opened this app in a long time. I even had to re-log into my account. Um, coming back, looking at this stuff, it is really cool stuff. These items are really cool. Like, they look very, very good. Um, and I can see why the collectors are in love with it. They like this new experience, this new age collecting and stuff like that. But, I mean, even with it looking cool, it's going to look better in the metaverse. It's going to look better in a setting that just suits it. And I think that in the VVverse, this is where this stuff is really going to shine, man. It's really going to shine. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to what this becomes in the future. Yeah, but VV is doing an amazing job, for sure. VV, this particular project, to move forward, I think without that cash-out feature, that was always a looming question that... As you were trying to onboard people, you could you would say you can't get your money out, and that was always people got a little bit nervous. And that brings me to the third point that we saw this year, and that is really I think you can't sugarcoat in any way is kind of the collapse of crypto, and of course that was led by FTX over the last couple of months. So interesting to watch it kind of melt down that one week over Twitter, um, and it's you know I think. People are learning more and more about what happened. We're learning more and more about what happened. And obviously, there is, uh, it looks like a tremendous amount of fraud and other things. Just really too bad for the industry, for crypto, everything. Um, and unfortunately, I think it looks like a lot of people lost a bunch of money, which is totally terrible. But um, I'll, I'll bring it back to a couple things with Vivi. Number one is, I think if that would have happened and Vivi w would not have been able to achieve cash out yet, it would have been... I don't think it may be catastrophic, but it definitely would have been a massive problem because there is still one of the problems with VV is the centralization of our um, collectibles on app. I don't know if it would have been a problem because if they didn't have cash out. What the heck was somebody going to do about it? If you stop believing in VV, who cares? Like, I think the thing, the key we're here with VV is that it's going to continue proving itself with time. If it's not enough that the biggest brands in human history, history is partnering with it, or Alfred Kahn and what he's done for the world and David Yu's history. If all of these obvious facts are not enough for people to believe in the project and to still have their doubts and stuff like that, I mean, people are going to doubt no matter what. So I think the people that's going to doubt VV are just going to doubt VV regardless of what they do. VV can't deliver anything to convince certain people. Um, the fact of the matter is, if people don't see VV's NFTs or the OMI token moving their bank account balances in real time, they're not going to believe. And this is where it comes down to knowing why you're in the project. Are you an investor and you're looking for for uh, a long-term investment? Are you an investor thinking that this is a short-term investment, which would mean that you have no idea what you're doing and you're not an actual investor? Or are you a true fan of collecting and this is the an experience and environment that you just want to be a part of and see where it goes? Are you here for the entertainment and the fun? And a lot of the people still around right now, that is the case for them. Um, so it's just about knowing where you fit in. I don't think anything that happens in these markets or anything impacts VV outside of regulators coming in and specifically targeting VV. Um, I don't think that there's anything that can happen in a broader space that could damage VV whatsoever. It's just too many powerhouses on VV side, too many powerful brands and too many more to come. So, yeah. You know, we, we can't put them, uh, you know, in cold storage or anything like that. And so. I think one of the things that you learned at FTX is you didn't want to store your crypto and other things on a centralized exchange. We have that scenario here with VV. So that will be something that they will have to overcome. But I think with the ability to cash out and the fact that the brands that are supporting VV are so strong and have been around so long, I think that has really helped it weather the storm. And I think yeah. it will continue uh, in the future. And that kind of brings me to my last point which is, I don't know if you can get, I mean, you can get lower than we are now, but from an overall market uh, sentiment, I don't know if you can get much lower. Literally anybody you talk to is down on crypto, down on NFTs, 
uh, feels like it's a rug pull, feels like it's a scam, feels like it's a Ponzi. Uh, and so I think, obviously, I don't agree with that. I, I still think that the technology of blockchain... It makes absolutely no sense. Every company in the world, every big brand in the world would all make the same mistake of trusting Vivi to be a part of some scam. Like after spending 100 years, some of these companies building their brand, they just want to go and all ruin it with Vivi. It's like, it makes no sense. The, the narrative people spin makes no sense for anybody logical taking the time to actually think it through. Um, this is not an investment that you have to worry about, in my opinion. Um, I never give financial advice, but this is this is the farthest thing from one of those investments that needs to be worried about, in my opinion. Pain is incredible is going to continue to grow. I also think that digital collecting, digital collectibles in one way, shape or form is going to be a thing going forward. Now, once again, is it going to be the biggest thing? I don't know. Is it going to be only a couple 10,000 people that will ever do it? I don't know. But it's going to be a thing and we're seeing that. Um, we obviously have a good core. Digital collecting in the sense of the, the, the VV community is seeing it as going to be a very niche amount of people it's going to be a very small amount of people but luckily one one thing that vv and the community has going for it is so many people are still thinking so small when it comes down to this project and don't actually see the actual vision but i love the fact that people are still here caring about drops and things like that all the stuff that actually does not matter and holds very little significance in the overall grand scheme of things like the fact that people are here caring about that stuff and 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 don't actually see the big picture yet that's very bullish because once people actually realize the magnitude of where this goes and how someone comes to a $10 OMI prediction and is actually not crazy and things like that, once people start to realize that the pieces start to come together and it becomes obvious to the point where anyone could see it, that is, that is, that's, things are going to be a lot different for a lot of people. This project is going to change a lot of lives. So, yeah. Core group people here on Vivi. There are other projects like the back house that I'm really um, interested in. Uh, some of the other projects like Broadsiders, other things that are coming on right now. So digital collecting is going to be a thing. I think it's completely different. And I've you know talked a little bit about that on this channel of how the different utility pieces are different than anything we've seen, at least I've seen yet with collecting. And so I'm, a, I'm up for another round. And so that kind of closes the year. As I said, when you think about the past, you think about the future. I still am very bullish on what I think is going to happen. Very intrigued. I do think it's going to be another 12 to 18 months. That's what all the kind of pundits, experts, et cetera, say based on macro events. And I do believe it's going to take some time to dig out just the overall sentiment um, with what happened with FTX and some of the other things with, with uh, crypto. So it'll be interesting. I really appreciate everybody this year that has watched this channel, supported me. It's been a great ride. Uh, and really the highlight for me was uh, going to L.A., meeting a lot of you in person. Hopefully I'll be able to do it. All right, y'all. So, yeah, there, here we have it. Um, the, this is the end. I, I like the video. This is a really good video, man. Um, let me know some of your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts about the sentiment and what's been going on in the community. Let me know some of the things that I've missed out on. Um, shout out to um, Sleeping Comics. Be sure to check out his channel. Show him some love as always, man. But yeah, there, there we have it. I'm back. I'm going to be checking out a lot more things going on in the community, hearing some thoughts, hearing opinions and things like that. I'm back. So yeah, it's going to be fun, man. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it, y'all. Um, be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, um, turn on notifications so you stay updated with everything that's dropped here on the channel. And I will catch you all on the next one. Peace out, fam.